You were smart to do Smokey in the Bandit. I'll tell you why. And I think this was your thinking. Tell me if, if I'm right. Sybil, everyone thought, oh, she's crazy. <laughs> and you really kind of, for lack of a better term, uglied yourself up. Yes, yes. Right? Uh-huh. The thought behind doing Smokey and the Bandit is, hey, okay, Burt Reynolds is the number one movie star, yeah. but uh-huh. you play a hot chick. Mm-hmm. So that was the plan, right? Yes, it was kind of, I did kind of think, well, maybe I should do it, because there was no script, and I didn't know Burt, and just he called, just said, let's just ad-lib our way through this thing. Do you like Smokey and the Bandit? I haven't seen it in quite some time. I, How did you feel I, about it when you did it? I just thought it was the end of everything that I had worked so hard to achieve. You know? <laughs> right. But, and so it was <laughs> shocking. That Why it, did you take it then? Just because of the, the, the... Because I just, there's there's just a part of me that w- something re- I respond to that go, that, that I think, okay, let's just jump off this cliff. It wasn't careful. It wasn't carefully thought out. And I just thought uh, it was film. It wasn't, uh, t- Sybil had been television. It thrust me back on the screen in film. It had taken me so long to get to film. And it was with Bert, who was, you know, a huge star. He was so, you know, charming and funny. I just, there was a little kernel of me that thought maybe we could pull something off. Also, Hal Needham, um, the director. The director was the world class stunt coordin- stunt coordinator. Um, hadn't really made a film, but if anyone could just do, and it was just that's all he did was figure out how to make those stunts work, have the people be safe, and have them be funny. But when you get to a movie set and there's hardly a script, mm-hmm. and Bert's winging it, and they say, "Just say whatever comes into your mind. We'll fix it later." I think you would go berserk. Well, you don't. You don't say fix it later. It really is in. It becomes in the lap of the actors. I mean, th- under this circumstances, because we would just drive off. Are you credited as a writer in that film? No. You kind of no, should be, shouldn't you? Since you're kind of <laughs> like sitting there making up the dialogue. Yeah, we're kind of making it up as we go along. Right. But 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 we all did. You know, and that's there. There are many films. There's many times in film. You do stuff like that. And Jackie Gleason was in that. Mm-hmm. Now, I idolize Jackie Gleason Me like too. everyone does. Is there a real kismet there between you and him? or? You know, I didn't, re- I didn't really work with him, so I didn't know him very well. I mean, we would, when, when we would make that transitional point where one car would pull up and the occupants would leave, so Bert and I would leave, and there would be Jackie sitting in his chair getting ready to get into his vehicle, and off they'd go. So there was a moment of, of interchange, but not much. Yeah. But everybody... You know, just worshipped him and sort of were like sitting at his feet. Yeah. Uh, and and he just he was wonderful to be around. He didn't. There wasn't any prima donna sort of part of him at all. Do you worry about box office? Like, do you care about the box office gross on Doris? The or do you ca- did you care when Norma Ray came out? I mean, I bet you even when Norma Ray came out, which was right after Smokey and the Bandit, thank God, because that all of a sudden made you the serious actress again, right? You could have gone down a whole nother road. Mm-hmm. Were they afraid to now put you in Norma Ray because you had done Smokey and the Bandit? The answer to the question is. Um, I didn't have to, it was the one thing, you know, that I wanted to do that I didn't have to fight for. Um, they wanted you. They did not want me, but mm. Marty Ritt wanted me, the director, and he said, they don't want you. <laughs> I was so Who did they want, do you they, know? They, yeah, they wanted everybody else, and, and, they had <laughs> asked, and they had asked everybody else. No one could envision Norma Ray, Sally Field. No, not at all. And so they'd asked all the other actresses at the time who were... You know the 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 bankable or the who were the big understand. ones? Jane Fonda. Well, Jane Fonda. Right. I think it was Jill Clayburgh, and it was Marsha Mason, and it was you know there was a whole bevy of them. They yeah. asked every one of them, and they all luckily turned it down. Why and do you think they turned it down? They probably thought it wasn't going to be a big box office success. I really, I don't, I really don't know. They didn't. Sometimes see it's in scheduling it. problems. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, Does I, I that don't sour know. you on a project when you hear everyone in Hollywood has turned it down? Do you say, oh, you know, maybe there's something they see that I don't? No, not when it's something that's written as exquisitely as this was. So no, it would. It meant it was um, meant to be that I somehow was meant to do this. Um, Those Marty ladies said, "I don't. The studio doesn't want you, but if you want to do it, I will fight for you, and and I will win." And he did. So. When you won the Oscar, those ladies must have been kicking themselves in the <laughs> Where head. Where were they? I think right? most of them were nominated that year as well for something. <laughs> we were all up against each Who other. Who was up against you when you? Uh, do you remember? Right. I think it was Bette Midler was in the Rose. Bette Midler was in the Rose. Marsha Mason. 
Marsha Mason, Chapter Jill, Jill, Two, Jill Clayberg, in Jane, uh, and Jane Fonda did China Syndrome. Oh my God! So it was all of them. <laughs> yeah, Jill Clayberg did Starting Over. Yeah, and you're up against them. Do you think you're going to win after uh, doing normal? Do you say to yourself, "I'm going to win this"? No, you don't. I you just don't think like that. I, you, I don't. Do you prepare I, a speech? I didn't. Yeah. Uh, but it was also a very different era. You also don't, you know, they don't give you clothes that are made by the <laughs> finest designers. Right. They're not yelling at you who you're wearing. They're not, none of that. You just go to the, the department acting. store and get a dress. And right. It, it wasn't the same kind of uh, whoop de doo But is it fun it for is you now. as a woman, as a girl, to put on a fancy dress, get all dolled up, and go to this big party, and then you win? Did they have all these after parties where everyone's just sort of at your feet? In those days, they didn't have um, a lot of after parties, didn't right. have all of the it's a whole uh, different stuff. Thing. There was one party, which was at Wolfgang Puck Spago, um, which was in the middle of Hollywood. But by the time you do all the press, you had to do you know, press up to press after you won. And I ran to this uh, to this party afterward because I wanted to go to the party. Gosh, I, I just want to be part of the party. And everybody was sort of leaving. Was, the party was over. It was like, can it, I have a piece of pizza? Yeah, where's my left? congratulations? Yeah, really. 